Now, the iconic Great Barrier Reef in Australia is in the grip of a mass coral bleaching event driven by global warming. It's the fifth time in eight years that widespread damage has been detected at the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And scientists are urging climate action to save the reef. To tell us a bit more, Julia Seeger is with me now. And Julia, before we get into this latest news, just tell us, look, what is coral? I think it's a really good question because mm. I think a lot of people don't know that it's actually an animal and mm. not a plant. So it lives in symbiosis with a unicellular algae called Xuxantella. And so it means that they can't live one without the other. And, and the coral is going to feed on this algae uh, and it's going to provide it 80 to even 90 percent of its energy needs. Now, the problem is that with uh, ocean warming, acidification, but also overfishing and, and mass tourism, uh, the corals are actually dying and they bleach. The reason why, and we think it's this initial stress that enable, uh, that makes it impossible for them to recognize that algae, and so they reject it, and hence they kind of starve themselves, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now, corals are actually a very important ecosystem for many reasons. They harbor 25% of marine life, uh, but they also are essential to the ocean's food chain. Uh, they uh, they also protect the coastlines of uh, immersion waves and extreme weather events, and they also uh, serve as a huge uh, food source for many people mm -hmm. who live on those coastlines. And scientists now are trying to keep the coral reefs going. Tell us about some of the techniques that they have to do that. So the main technique that's used today is marine farming. So what scientists are going to do is they're going to uh, get and retrieve these coral fragments. These are pieces of coral that are detached from the animal but are still alive. They're going to retrieve it and they're going to attempt to regrow them and reproduce them. So they're going to place them, as you're going to see on those pictures, in these nurseries, right? Mm -hmm. So these are corals that have survived, if you will, uh, a first heat wave, and so they're going to reproduce them. The next step is to put them back into the ocean to allow them to grow. And here they're going to be uh, placed in the open waters, and they're going to create um, these sort of, you can see here, you almost want to say marine forests, mm -hmm. right? So these are coral uh, trees that were created by uh, the Coral Reef Foundation. And then they take them back and they place them onto the coral reef. And here they're going to use these uh, metal structures or sometimes made out of concrete or even uh, stone that you can see here. And uh, what's really interesting is that these corals have indeed survived a first initial climatic stress. So we know that they're a little bit more resilient to uh, climate change. And uh, what's interesting also is that they're able to do that thanks to cellular memory. Now, uh, you know, for now it's actually working really well. Let's look together at the difference from a coral reef that's completely dead and then they're putting back uh, the corals. And so here you can see the difference is huge. And now you can see that the marine life is slowly gonna come back. So it's working. We don't know for how long it's gonna work, mm -hmm. but it's actually working really well so far. Well, that's a bit of good news, uh, Julia. And I understand that artificial intelligence is playing a role here. Tell us about that. That's right. There's an AI that was developed by Coral Reef Soundscape AI. And what it does is that it tunes in and it listens into coral reefs. As I said, there's a lot of fauna that's feeding onto this coral reef, so it makes a lot of noise. Uh, let's just listen into the difference between a healthy coral reef, what it sounds like, and an unhealthy one. There you can really see the difference between both. It's quite incredible. Now, what's uh, interesting here is that the AI can actually decipher these weak signals. So alert scientists in the very first moments where a coral reef is perhaps endangered because of the sound that's slowly going down. It's been called this, uh, this uh, AI, it's been called the Shazam of uh, the health of coral reefs because it <laughs> listens in and it kind of gives it a grade. <laughs> That's so fun. Well, that's pretty fascinating. Thank you very much indeed. Julia Seeger for us there with some science uh, on the programme.